normally all this would be frozen. here really hits the spot I'll tell you You want um, some for your thermos too, eh, bud? Yeah. yeah. I'll just boil this full thing. It is first thing in the morning, day four of our adventure. Uh, we woke up at 5 a.m. today, um, so a little less sleep. But we're hoping that means that, you know, we can maybe get on a bit of a different schedule, and utilize more of the daylight, and, uh, have a little bit more time when it's light out at camp. Thanks, North. North is learning his keep in these parts. creamer this morning so I added hot chocolate you know you gotta, you gotta roll with the punches out here that's advanced bushcrafting you know anyways uh, yeah we woke up at 5 today had to take a couple of emergency outdoor breaks early on cut into my time a bit and um, got the stove going got some coffee on oatmeal the huge and just kind of basically packing up now I'm trying to get a bit of an earlier start today get up at five as opposed to six hoping that that means we can uh, you know put more miles behind us and uh, you know make better use of the daylight too and it won't get so dark be so dark right away after making camp had a pretty good sleep last night kept the fire running all night missed that extra hour though would have been nice seven eight instead of seven but uh, you know we're getting a lot of exercise out here so the, the sleep is good but um, my sleep system is great nice warm minus 40 down sleeping bag and this uh, great x ped long wide down mat so it's just like as comfy as my bed at home basically which is awesome anyways looking forward to seeing what the day has in store so far we're behind schedule because um, things have been really challenging um, with the portaging we've had to do a lot of that has to do or some of that has to do with ice conditions and it being a warm winter um, the ice at the base of the rapids and areas where there's subtle current isn't frozen over at all or isn't walkable which has forced us to cut into the woods and bushwhack greater distances to bypass it but now we have a long stretch of just lakes. We're going to have uh, one portage today um, where we're going to drag through uh, the trail, but it's short. And then that'll, um, or two maybe, if we can get into Chinaguchi. But neither of them, one of them might be kind of longish, one of them short, but uh, nothing even remotely compared to yesterday or the day before. So we're hoping we're getting to some area where we could make some distance, but um, the challenge is going to be there's some snow coming today, which could slow us down having a break trail and could create slush and whatever. So we'll see how it goes, um, but there's colder temps around the corner too, which would, could help firm things up and help freeze up the ice at the base of uh, where there's current. But it seems we're heading into an area where things are going to be uh, a little more conducive to making some distance. So.
Yeah, so this is uh, my Blue Eddy EB3A. Small, light, look at how light this thing is. And uh, this is 268 watt hours. Um, it's got uh, a DC plug-in. It's got a uh, AC plug-in. Um, two AC plug-ins actually. Um, and it's got a 120 volt AC 9 amp uh, connector as well, which is pretty cool. Circuit protector. Uh, USB-C, uh, two USB ports, and a flashlight on it. Also, check this out, on the top, right here, is a wireless charging port, so you can put your cell phone. This is all I need to power this entire trip, and like I said, we're just getting packed up here a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, while we're getting packed up, I'm gonna plug in some of my batteries for my mirrorless camera, which is the main camera I'm using to cover all these uh, exciting things we're doing out here. So that should work great. Um, and you can charge with this until minus 20 degrees Celsius, no problem. Plug in whatever, charge your drone batteries. It's amazing how much power this thing has. So yeah, I'm gonna get this going and get back to work so we can uh, get out of here and make some distance today. trusted you and you betrayed me. Yeah, that's it. I should have warned you if you start giving him treats and he starts begging, you know? Yeah, well, that's how I hate it. Listen, I enjoy it, but now I got some two slobbery pieces of ground. But... <laughs> so uh, right now I'm just uh, rubbing some wax on North Sled. This sled has seen a few kilometers. My old dog Buck used to haul it. He hauled it across Baffin Island and a bunch of other trips. And uh, just this material um, picks up ice, but because there's more scratches in it, it seems to be picking up more slush. And as soon as you get slush stuck to it, that slush freezes and the uh, sled basically becomes useless because you're dragging a big ball of ice along the bottom that doesn't slide and it's super heavy. So we're gonna try giving it a wax down. Max brought some wax, so Max with the wax. You can see how it's kind of filling in that crack. Sorry, slush. We got a full house, bud. No slush is allowed! Explain how this is called hoarfrost. Sex work is work. H O A R, Jim. So, yeah, we're coming up to some open water, and especially again because it's been a warmer year, a lot less is firmed up at the base of the rapids there which means that we have to bushwhack just to get to a proper trail. So we don't even know if we can get to the side where the Portage Trail is, unfortunately. But we're gonna play it safe.
So just to give you an idea of uh, this warm year that we're having, normally all this would be frozen and we could probably just walk over this bank into this eddy into there. But now all this is unsafe ice here. And so it's forcing us to walk all the way around through lumpy boulders and everything to even get to where it would normally start. And then it's no cakewalk either. Freaking crevasse here. Don't put your snowshoe into there. Yikes. <sighs> All right, mush. As you can see here, we're using a four-man system to get up this stupidly steep and narrow gulch, we're gonna call it, uh, from Wolf Lake into, I believe, Dudney. And uh, then we're gonna continue on, but this part's by far the hardest. So what we're doing, three guys in front all have harnesses, one guy in the back pushing, and uh, North running around having a ball. It's good to be a dog sometimes. Oh no, amigo. The narrows is too. F me. Uh, it's f We're just scouting uh, the end of the portage trail. Usually, this is the pudding. Usually, that would be frozen, or at least where Xander was. And then, if you look way out here, there's like a gray area there. There's a narrow, so there's a, there's a bit of current there and that would definitely be frozen solid but we're not even gonna be able to walk over that which kind of sucks so yeah the uh, ice conditions are uh, are making things a lot more challenging which i guess we you know we knew that would probably be an issue and here we are and it is so i think what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna just see what kind of ice we're working with over here how many more narrows are around there xander uh there's that narrows yeah you can take a look at the map I think we could squeeze along the shoreline. On the That's actually maybe not a bad idea, dude. Yeah, just bushwhack that. Yeah, maybe. More. Didn't go through. Well, I'm just checking the ice. We're hoping we can get through this narrows up here. These guys are letting me be the guinea pig because I have the axe. So we have three and a half, four inches here of slush ice. Then we have a layer of water and then we have what's probably the black ice underneath. See that there, that's all sketchy ice. So right here we got like an, maybe two inches, inch and a half of black ice, but I can feel the bottom. So if we spread out here, it should be okay. Uh, sketchy ice, but safe passage through here. So yeah, we're saved, but there's another big narrows coming up. And usually wherever there's a narrows, means there could be current. That's the other narrows we were worried that would be open. 
We worried over there would be open, but it looks like if we stay right, we'll be good. We're good to go, guys! Well, on closer inspection, this... Oh, this doesn't look too bad right around this point though, guys. And it'll stay right by that. <sighs> Trash ice, dude. Right here. We don't feel like walking over that. Which means we have to go around. Well, the good news is that the hole narrows isn't trash ice coming through this narrows here i get close to this rock and i broke through i didn't get a soaker but just look at how deep it is but i think it's just because there's current here and it's close to the rock everything else feels pretty thick how's it going boys doing real well could use another coffee Day. Yeah. If you don't break you, I'm <laughs> well, we made it through the sketchy ice and narrows. And look at this. The world is our sardine. I mean oyster. Damn it, I always screw that up. There is Chinaguchi Lake. I made it. We're probably gonna camp right there, but everything's taking way longer than anticipated. And it's because all these initial portages, again, the takeout, first of all, we're going up an elevation, up a series of waterfalls, so it's uphill. Second of all, where we're taking out to start the trail, there's water there, there's no ice. When we get to the put-in, there's water there, there's no ice. We're having to come up with all kinds of ideas, crossing thin ice in between two stretches of open water, bushwhacking over points, etc., etc. Anyways, I'm gonna whip my toboggan down this hill. This is Chinaguchi Lake. Uh, I'm gonna go back and grab uh, North's tea boggin. Maybe you guys just cruise the shore till you find a place that doesn't have a ton of slush, yeah? I have Thanksgiving dinner. I have steak and potatoes. I think I'm gonna do steak and potatoes. Okay, well, what is this you may ask? This is a tip up I brought. We have something a little interesting in here. I'm gonna try it now. I gotta drill a couple holes. We need to take water. Uh, so I figured while well, I got my eye on it and I'm sawing up some wood, why not? drop a lure so 
you may be asking, but Jim, a fish just sitting there, nothing's gonna bite that, it's gotta be moving, you gotta be sitting there jigging. Well, not this lure, this is a robotic minnow lure, that's right, a robotic minnow lure. So it kind of moves around for 45 minutes, there's a little propeller on the front. Sunny times, ladies and germs. So I'm gonna drop that down and uh, see if you can't hook into a pike or a walleye. Either or. It's working. It automatically turns on. 45 seconds. I'm going to be just off the bottom. See the first layer? And then here's the second. Not a lot of ice for this north at this time of year, but there's still a good amount of ice. And a laker too. Wasn't even hooked that well. And look, it's a good size. Yeah. Look at that. Not a beaut. <sighs> nice laker. Shot of it. So obviously the tip up was worth bringing out here, right? Definitely. Leave it north. Beautiful. We're gonna eat that. Yes. Yeah, I brought Old Bay too. Great. <sighs> You want to start at the asshole and just slice right up between the two front fins, right up to the top. Now the cheeks on these bigger lake trout are pretty tasty. So I like to keep the head on. So what you want to do, you see right in here, see this part there? Stab through there like that. And then uh, forward like that. And then you kind of essentially make another little Another little tab right there. And then uh, then you just grab that tab and pull down. It's not fro too frozen yet. You just rip out all the guts and the front fins with it. And then uh, take out this bloodline with your finger thumb there. Like that. Along the back of the spine. Clean it off with some snow. And then uh, I'll cut that in half. I'll be ready to fry up in a pan for dinner. Excited? Yeah, I am excited. Me too. Me too. Oh, amazing. Thank you. You're After a long day on the trail, this is going to taste super, super good. North, 
North. That was the most buttery, delicious lake trout I've ever had in my entire life. Up there with the best two, I would say, ever. I wish there was about four times more. It's having a hot chocolate here. Um, probably gonna eat some more dehydrated chicken pot pie if I can find the energy to do anything else. Um, finish this hot chocolate and go to bed. North didn't come in the tent. He's just curled up on a bed of boughs outside. Um, so I've left the door unzipped a bit so he can like kind of scooch under if it gets cold in the night. But he seems to find the stove too hot and seems to have been enjoying sleeping outside. So here's to him. Well, it's uh just after 6 a.m. Uh, and it is coffee time in uh, in our tent as we uh, get get prepped for another long day out there. But nothing gets you going like a big old pot of black coffee. Just checking the uh, weather, I can get a uh, weather location update here on my Garmin inReach and. Um, we thought it was going to be, you know, minus 30 or minus 25 this morning, and now it's like minus three. And so, you know, we rely on the cold weather, and in the days to come, we're looking at like highs of zero and minus one. And, you know, with those temperatures can come freezing rain, sleet, a lot of ugly things, and also just ice doesn't freeze nearly as fast when there's moving water. It needs to be really cold dramatically increasing the amount of time and elbow grease it takes to, to do these things. Yeah, it's great. So just beast mode right through the middle of it. That was my strategy. <laughs> Muskoka roastery. A little creamer in there. <sighs> Delish. Good morning, Xander. Nice day. I know it is. There we go. North loved this bow bed, by the way, guys. Slept here pretty much all night. North, come here. <laughs> so these auger blades are super tough to sharpen. Borderline impossible. And impossible in the field. Plus they're sharp and dangerous. So I had a bit of wire here. Hay wire's better. I just use snare wire, snare wire just to help hold it on. So it won't come off and cut something or it won't uh, won't get dulled. And I also bring an Allen key and a, another set. Mora makes them who make great bushcraft knives and stuff like that. Come here, bud. What's this? These aren't really meant for uh, uh, keeping the paws warm, but for preventing abrasion. Good boy. Sit. 
He's never worn these before. He's gonna walk all funny. Look, at, look how he's gonna walk. He's... Come on, North. What's this? So far, not so good. Come on, I'll help you from the slush. Come on, come on, come on. You got it. It's just normal. <laughs> He doesn't like them. Right. So he'll, he'll have to get used to them. He's doing alright. Yeah. yeah. Well, it appears that that rain and wind we had yesterday might have really screwed us. Norse uh, toboggan won't move anywhere. Look at this slush. Just water with all the freezing rain and wet, wet snow. It's just put a lot of pressure on the ice and all the cracks are just pushing water up. Everybody else is way ahead waiting for me and I can't north toboggan every three steps I have to clean it off and it's just pulling like an absolute log. It's a disaster. Come on, North. Come on, boy. I can barely even pull North Toboggan on my own. Go on. Up, 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 up. Oh, oh my God. We're f I don't know what's going on here, but I feel like I might have almost just broken through the ice or at least the slush layer. Everyone's way ahead of me. And just cause I'm heavier than everybody, every step is going into the slush. And on top of that, North sled gets is getting, for whatever reason, is getting super easily iced up. Uh, on a fun note, this is the campsite that uh, Ted and I camped at one time in the summer. Wow, there's tons of smallmouth in here. Is the oatmeal in this one? But like, what the hell is that? Like, I just, I don't know, man. Hopefully there's another layer under there that I step onto the ground. But that's, that's crazy. That was one step. And now I gotta go back and get north. So yeah, it's super windy and snowing today. And everybody's ahead of me breaking trail, so I'm gonna let them go, but I'll just follow their trail. But uh, it's pretty sketchy traveling conditions today. And if we're just barely inching along, it's a little concerning. So I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly here, but I'm gonna have to figure it out. Well, that worked. North made it, but then then he couldn't make it anymore because he oh, 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 fuck. oh my god <sighs> what the f crazy man north uh couldn't make it anymore he made it as far as he could but then he hit the slush again and uh his toboggan is like impossible to pull when there's just a huge ball of slush on the bottom so I walked ahead and he's following me 
then he got stuck and then I ran into that gong show of almost breaking through the ice everybody's way ahead of me and now when I'm already so far behind I gotta turn around and go get the dog crazy yeah I just have my ice scraper in my pocket and having to pull flip his uh, sled over scrape it off flip mine over scrape it off and I already have two soakers and we've only made it not even a kilometer today so yeah terrible conditions and it's too bad because this lake was supposed to be a spot where we could make good time so you know with the traveling conditions we had yesterday we could make good time on the lake but things changed overnight unfortunately and uh it's looking like now that we have this con to contend with uh there's no way that we can make it to Galganda in 12 days like it probably take like in this type of weather 18 20 days 16 at the very least we don't have that kind of time so i think we're gonna have to probably the other guys ahead of me they're probably not breaking through as much as me but they're probably gonna agree with me that we're gonna have to uh switch things up come on bud what are you doing back here Oh, it's not even bad, but North is also kind of scared. You gotta go, North. Come on, boy. Come on. North is scared of the slush. We don't like slush either. Come on, you got over this fear, bud. You got over this fear. Hey. Okay? Come here, North. Let's go. Ugh. It's not even that bad. It's just not even moving from this. That's crazy. Well, I'm just gonna keep plugging along like this. Hopefully I catch up to those guys soon. I have enough stuff I can survive out here, so not too worried about that, but way behind. North's in the slush. I caught up with these guys and uh, gave them my pity story of why I'm ruining everyone's day. And uh, gave this another scrape really hard to get it out I'm gonna take a second and uh, wax on wax on wax off if you can remember that you were probably born in the 80s can you remember that oh, yeah. oh f were you born in the 80s yeah, 80s. I guess you were yeah yeah anyways I'm not I'm not that old eh? what is that karate kid yeah, karate kid, yeah. yeah. well I'm gonna karate kid the sh out of this toboggan so hard because it's enraging me but first I'm gonna try this Well, got some more open water here, but it looks like there's a pretty good route just to hop over there so we don't have to get our, get our bathing suits on. I think this is the way me and my brother went. Yeah, this is where I caught that fish, 100%. This is exactly where I was worried about. No, no worries though, eh? Beautiful scene in the open water next to the snow. Yeah, man. After the last gong show um, of me breaking through the ice, etc., etc., we've decided that uh, we're gonna change up our route and do something that is humanly possible in the amount of time we have, but we're super excited because it might put us on some decent lake trout waters and give us an extra day that we can take off to sort of just uh, rest our bones because we've been really giving her so um yeah we're gonna all be gonna be all exploring some uh, new territory and uh doing a big loop 